In yesterday's monthly Helium community call, an idea that seems to have been well discussed and well thought out was introduced to the Helium community. A brief intro to the idea from Helium CEO Amir Halim set the stage for Multicoin Capital's Tushar Jain to further elaborate. This proposal is an entirely new economic and technical infrastructure for Helium and is being designed to more easily and effectively support new users, devices, and different types of network protocols. In the recent months, we have all been witness to the difficulty in building in 5G to the existing Helium network. This hip which outlines the new Decentralized Autonomous Organization, or DAO structure, will allow for more seamless integration to the decentralized Helium network. This is tremendous news for Helium and can set the stage for Helium to really expand beyond a network only used for IoT devices or 5G connectivity. We will go through some of the details in today's video and touch on a few interesting snippets from the meeting yesterday that may point to some larger players pulling the strings behind the scenes. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here in the Crypto Compound channel. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you're all having a great day. Please hit that like, subscribe on the way and it really helps support the channel. Guys, incredible news for you guys today. It was uh, announced or released or discussed yesterday in yesterday's Helium monthly community call. Here on the screen is the monthly call agenda and notes. There is a lot to go through with regards to this update and it has been in the works for months according to Tushar Jain uh, who is a part of multi coin capital we will go through uh the announcement here on the discord we will take a look at the notes here i will also go through some of the most interesting snippets from this call that came directly from whether it's emir or tushar or jmf or whoever was discussing i'll also put a link to all this stuff in the description below so you guys can come and watch this i'd highly highly recommend it uh and we'll also take a look here at github these are the two these two hips are already on the GitHub, um, it is the Helium DAO, and then they are going to, it seems as though there will be a new hip for every sub DAO. We will get into what all of this means in today's video. Before we do that, very, I just wanted to take a quick look here at the chart. Helium has been performing incredibly well, moving up to the 40 rank by market cap. In previous technical analysis video earlier this week, we were down in this area. I was not expecting us to get and test this resistance line so fast, but we did, and it is a very interesting reaction. Helium is performing extraordinarily well in these market conditions. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to what's happening, and as you can see yesterday, it seems as though there was some positive price action as a result of some of these announcements in the community call. As you can see, we did touch above $30 briefly. Very, very interesting, and very, very good and strong price action here from Helium. All right, guys, I almost don't even know where to start with all of this information. There is a lot of it, and some of it becomes very, very technical. Again, there'll be links to all of the different pages we look at in today's video down below so you guys can read through it. It is very complicated. It's an entirely new economic and technical structure for the Helium network. It really breaks Helium apart into different pieces or different DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, in order for Helium to be able to scale more effectively and more efficiently for different types of networks or wireless network protocols or WNPs as we will reference in the documentation we take a look at here today. So guys, Jamie here has created two new channels here in the Discord, the Helium, the HIP51 Helium DAO and already the HIP52 LoRaWAN sub DAO here on the Discord server. There is going to be a lot of back and forth, a lot of questions being answered here. So I would highly recommend coming and taking a look. We will go over the major points that he makes here in introducing this topic. As you can see, this proposal outlines economic and technical constructions with the aim of scaling the Helium network to support new users, devices, and types of wireless network protocols. We propose that each wireless network supported by Helium, LoRaWAN, Wi-Fi, 5G, referred to as wireless network protocols or WMPs, has its own sub-DAO with its own token, referred to as wireless network tokens or WNTs. He mentions that the aim is to create an economy such that the underlying HNT data credit burn and mint equilibrium remains undisrupted and proof of coverage rules and minor emission amounts are dictated by the corresponding wireless networks sub token. Now he begins to explain how there are different layers or this 
t this proposal will, entails different layers to the helium network. They are referred to as L1, which is the broader helium network layer where the accounts and the transactions and all of that stuff and, and people's helium wallets will live. That is on the L1. Basically, it will resemble uh, the, the overarching helium network. All accounts and WNPs and stuff like that will be referred to as sub DAOs, which will be the L2 of the network. And those will all, and the benefit of this introduction is that all of those things will be self governed. They'll be able to have their own rules, their own regulations. They'll be able to make changes to each other independently from the broader Helium network. Now, in this community call, Amir himself in the beginning, just about. I don't wanna play any of this because uh, you guys can come watch it yourselves. I do wanna, however, include some valuable information that I thought was very interesting. Now, Amir expresses how they've seen such difficulty in integrating 5G into the Helium network where there was all this LoRaWAN governance already in place. And now what the problem is that with the 5G, there are different governances and different structures, different rules that come along with that type of protocol. So f to have to make those changes to the entire Helium network when it's just directed for 5G, it makes the process of improving the network and scaling the network far more difficult. Now, the introduction of these sub DAOs will eliminate those types of hurdles. Amir expresses his interest in this by wanting to expand and scale other network protocols the same way LoRaWAN has scaled and he doesn't see or he's confused by the way that that would happen if everything has to be governed by the same protocol on the greater Helium network. He also makes it very clear that he is looking far beyond 5G. He clearly says that 5G will not be the last type of network or protocol to be added to the Helium network. So this will set the stage for Helium to be able to expand into a truly monstrous decentralized node network across the globe that can support almost any type of decentralized wireless protocol, which would increase the value of the Helium network exponentially. Now guys, after Amir introduced this topic, Tushar really took it from there and he went on to explain a lot of very, very interesting things and things that they were thinking about when outlining how this will work. He then begins to explain something that is well illustrated here on the screen. It comprises of hel helium, which is basically the L1. Everything here, it's not labeled, but basically what they're talking about is this piece here is all of the L1 or the level one piece of the Helium network, which is what we know of today with consensus group, data credit rewards, proof of coverage rewards, and all of that stuff is comprised in L1. And then there will be these other protocols down here, which could be known as the L2 or sub DAOs. As you can see, Lor LoRaWAN DAO, 5G DAO, Wi-Fi DAO, all of this will be open source. It will be able for anyone to come in and create their own sub DAO. It will make it far, far greater and far more easier and more open for people to then build onto the Helium blockchain and therefore leverage the scalability and the usability of the decentralized Helium network. Tushar also made a point to state that this type of network structure will make the network and each sub DAO far more resilient. He stated that something like a blockchain outage on the 5G DAO will not have an impact on the LoRaWAN DAO and the LoRaWAN DAO will operate uninterrupted. This is incredibly important as we've seen from blockchain halts in the past. Another huge point that Tushar made in yesterday's meeting was that a lot of these sub DAOs or all of these sub DAOs can be written in different languages and these protocols can be written in different languages which really opens the doors for different developers, new developers to engage and build on the Helium network, making it so far easier to scale this network globally using different network protocols. Now, one of the things that is most confusing for people is how will the tokens or the coins work in this new world and this new network structure. HNT, of course, will still exist and HNT will remain the primary economic asset of, of the network and the data credits on the network will be interoperable between the different sub DAOs. As you can see here, each protocol will be an L2 token. Tushar does explain how this would work and how each different sub DAO will earn a different token which can be exchanged based on a bonding curve for HNT coins. And of course, data credits will be the universal and interoperable function between each protocol. And each protocol can govern itself, which is one of the biggest and most important and critical 
use cases of this new structure. As you can see here, hotspots are able to convert lower end tokens to HNT and can continue mining HNT as they always have been. LoRaWAN here is being used as a L2 or a sub DAO example on how you'll earn LoRaWAN tokens but can convert them easily back to HNT and you would basically be mining HNT the same way you always have been. Now the complication comes in and JMF comes in with really a structure and a formula on how to allocate HNT between the different wireless network protocols. Now there are a few complicated formulas here on how that would work. We're not going to get into those technicals. However, like I mentioned, Mentioned. All this information will be linked below in the description so you guys can come take a look at how some of these WNPs rewards will be distributed across the network and they do leverage a bonding curve which is very interesting and will sort of scale the rewards based on supply and demand. Now as you can see here there are some mechanism diagrams down here which get a little bit more technical. Very very well thought out and really has the potential to open the doors for Helium to really grow beyond just LoRaWAN, IoT and 5G connectivity. Now guys right around the 58 minute mark here in the video, I did want to point out, as I mentioned in the intro, it does sound to me at least a little bit like there was some pressure for this type of network structure to be implemented on the Helium network. And around minute 58, Tushar actually mentions it when he mentions how AT&T would then be able to create their own sub DAO and leverage the Helium network and govern that sub DAO themselves. I think that is incredibly important and incredibly interesting. And I do have a feeling that there may have been some pressure from some of these major telcos to have this type of structure so that they have more control over their protocol. Now think, if you are AT&T or Verizon, you do not want to be on a network protocol and uh, a governance structure that also is being used to operate different types of networks. You want to have control, you want to have your own governance, you want to have your own code so that you can actually leverage these nodes and this decentralized network the way you specifically want to. Now, the only way they can do that, of course, is by leveraging the Helium network. So them being an L2 to Helium's L1 would give them that benefit and that opportunity. And I think that is incredibly important. That being said, I think it is incredibly important to also remember that Multicoin Capital and Tushar Jane and all the people involved here from Multicoin are, of course, at the end of the day, crypto investors. They have a huge stake in Helium and are looking to make money. Now, they are a huge part of this proposal, a huge part of these hips and this DAO and sub DAO structure. And I think the reason for that is because they see the value in it. They are here to make money. That that is the reality. I do not think Tushar wakes up in the morning dreaming about network structure and code and stuff like that. I don't think he's doing this as a passion. They are professional investors. That is what they do. And they are incredibly involved in this proposal. And they are incredibly involved because I believe that they really see the value in creating this type of structure around the Helium network. And if they have had any conversations with any telcos and they ex and the telcos express the interest or the ability for them to be able to govern themselves on the Helium network somehow, and this is the answer to that, then I think that this is what Multicoin would have done. And it makes total sense that they will be this involved in this type of development. Now, of course, guys, there is also HIP52, which is the LoRaWAN sub DAO. This, of course, would be one of the sub DAOs on the Helium network of maybe infinite sub DAOs, right? There could be LoRaN, Wi-Fi, 5G, uh, even ones that aren't wireless. There could be VPN sub DAOs on the Helium network that leverage the decentralized node network of Helium. So guys, we will have more information, more videos on this topic. I think this is probably one of the first and biggest surprises of the year so far, and perhaps probably the largest news in the Helium community for the past year or so. This is a tremendous change to the network structure to the entire Helium network. And it is, I believe, a positive change. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are, what you guys are thinking. I really encourage you to read through these documents, watch yesterday's video. It is from about the 30 minute mark to the 55 minute mark where they discuss this topic. It is incredibly, incredibly interesting and hugely important if you are involved in this community at all. So guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Please hit that like and subscribe subscribe. If you have not already, leave any questions down below for me. I will try and get to them. But just like that, this video is over and I'll see you next time.